Hi, thanks for joining everyone. Welcome to our webinar on how to build a robust information security program today. And today I've got with me Mark Sparrow, our senior sales representative, and Laird Wilton, co-founder and COO of Securacy. I'm Shannon McFarland, the director of content at Securacy. And today we're gonna to be looking at a number of questions that you might be asking for your own business. We're gonna start off by introducing ourselves, who we are at Securacy and what we do. We're gonna look at why do businesses need a security program? What are the core components of your security program? And how you can create and manage a program for your business, as well as what resources are available for you to start your secure own security program for free. And from here, I'm gonna pass it over. Mark, it's all you. Thank you very much, Shannon. Um, so my name is Mark Sparrow. I'm a senior sales rep here at Securacy. And uh, prior to working here at Securacy, I was a part of uh, another company that uh, basically ran into a lot of cybersecurity questionnaires from our customers and you know really had to go through that whole process. And I have a little bit more I'll touch on on that in a bit, but um, coming into this world from the background of someone that's been working in the SaaS company environment and dealing with um, the expectations that customers have for businesses around information security. And uh, hi everyone, certainly appreciate you um, you joining our uh, our discussion today. I'm uh, Laird Wilton, COO and co-founder of Securacy. And uh, similar to uh, to Mark's uh, background, um, you know, when we in a previous SaaS, we we certainly ran into some challenges in terms of uh, information security and working with larger organizations, and that really was the genesis for. Um, Securacy ultimately, you know, a platform and an offering that could help uh, companies, you know, deal with uh, the challenges that we encountered in, in in a previous SaaS. So certainly excited to be here with everyone today, and uh, look forward to the uh, the discussion. All right, so we're going to get started here, but as a, an overview, um, we're going to introduce you uh, in a little more detail to Securacy. Um, as Shannon mentioned earlier, we're going to look at why businesses need to have an information security program, the core components of that, what you should be thinking about if you're starting to put together an information security program. Um, we're also going to talk about some things that you can use for free um, to get started to help you put that program together. Um, so towards the end of the call, we'll have some recommendations of some things that you could put to use on that. Um, we also will be taking questions, by the way, so we'll kind of run through and then at the end, uh, we'll be watching for any questions that come through and uh, we'll be happy to take those at the end. I think we'll have uh, we should have more than enough time to cover uh, everything we have to show and talk about and whatever questions that you have so all right so to get started so laird and i both kind of touched on this a little bit but we both come from the same company prior to being here at Securacy, where laird is a co-founder and in that company we were selling to bigger and bigger uh, businesses all the time we're a b2b company we had a SaaS product it happened to be in the live e event space and anytime the bigger uh, organizations wanted to do business with us, they would send us a security questionnaire. And the first couple times we got that, it was very challenging to kind of navigate it and you know trying to understand what they're asking for. And you know everyone on our team was doing their job well. The sales team was great. The DevOps team was great. Everything, everyone was doing their job. We just didn't have in-house cybersecurity expertise. And so uh, we basically had to organize all of this and sort it out ourselves and very quickly realize there's a high cost to that both financially also operationally when uh, everyone is scrambling because you want to get that deal closed and you want to answer that questionnaire positively and then you realize well you may have some gaps of your own that you need to close it very quickly can become a pretty daunting challenge and that's really the whole reason why we started this uh, company Securacy is because we know that there are companies that were in the same shoes that we were in that had these problems and we wanted to be able to provide them with something that could help them with that process much more quickly and, and much more cost effectively. Um, Laird, is there anything else you wanted to add on that? Yeah, I mean, I've said just a little bit of, uh, of of context from the perspective of the role that I was in, um, you know, at the time in the previous SAS, the Chief Revenue Officer, 
uh, for the company. And if you can imagine, like our trajectory uh, had been to work with, you know, we really started out to, as, a, as a startup, worked with smaller organizations, you know, and, and that really became the core of our, our, our customer group were, were smaller companies and their concerns uh, really weren't as prevalent around our security practices or uh, the infrastructure we had in place. And as you know, the company evolved and we added more customers and you can appreciate the growth trajectory of a, of a startup, you know, you're moving quick, you're adding more people, um, customers are getting bigger. And then as we were able to, to have some of those big wins and really start to get into um, conversations with multinational orgs that, you know, really open the door for a bright future for the organization, that's where we were kind of really hit with more of a challenge in terms of information security. So a real trigger for us, as the market had mentioned, was, you know, ultimately, you know, security, information security questionnaires and, you know, assessment of our org from um, a, a customer from an external sense wasn't something we were familiar with until then. And all of a sudden, you know, you're in this, uh, you know, situation where, you know, you, you hear it sometimes described as trying to change the wheels on a on a moving train, really, and, and, and trying to, you know, implement best practices and work through there. So, you know, really for, for me, when I think about, um, you know, our philosophy and how we've approached, you know, the, the application and our service offering is to really think about, um, you know, an organization like that and, you know, ultimately um, to, to, you know, to build efficiencies and think about that change management and implementation side of an information security program. And, you know, we spend a lot of time still thinking about how we can make that more efficient. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, anyone that is on the call who finds themselves in that sales role and the questionnaire hits and, um, you know, and finding yourself in the position of maybe not getting things shored up in time, uh, that is something that we can definitely empathize with. In our past, we've, we've, we've had to deal with that. So, um, okay, so, you know, when you think about putting an information security program together, uh, typically it's rooted in a set of policies. It's, it's the most concise way to say it. The policies are going to kind of dictate uh, what you do across your organization, uh, perhaps with your technology, with your, your operations. But essentially, you know, a, a really strong policy set lays out the groundwork and the tasks and the, the procedures that are required to begin to put together uh, an information security program. That's just the basics in general of what an information security program is going to be rooted on. Um, and it also is what we have built our solution to kind of align with. And if you think about it kind of in a linear uh, fashion, creating the policies that are required for an organization being kind of a step one, but a policy document that uh, just sits as a piece of text is essentially useless if you're not also implementing the tasks that need to be completed to ensure that you're actually implementing it if you're not making sure that staff are actually reading, understanding the text and signing off on those policies. Again, that's it's not gonna be worth very much if you can't demonstrate anyone's used the policy in any way. So with the idea being, you know, create a robust set of policies, implement those policies in terms of the tasks and the projects associated with it, being able to manage that too so having a process whereby you know who signed off who didn't what tasks are outstanding what ones are completed being able to manage that all together and then to be able to report on it to basically demonstrate to a stakeholder if that is one of these customers that's asking you to demonstrate your posture or perhaps a board member who needs uh, some kind of a report um, you know taking that right through from building the policies out to being able to show people that they've been implemented and taken all the steps in, in between. Uh, how we measure our success as a company comes down to uh, the types of deals that our customers are closing. So most uh, of the people we work with find themselves in the position where they have little to no information security program. They know they need to do something. They have a customer that's coming to them with a questionnaire or driving them to put a, a program in place. And uh, when we take them from that point A to point B of them actually closing that deal, that's how we measure our success. And uh, something that uh, we take we take great pride in is helping people cross that line um, and, and get, get, get that deal over the line. So 
uh, some of the deals you know that our customers are closing are um, with uh, bigger and bigger companies all the time you see a few of them on the slide there all right so for the next piece i guess i'd like to get us thinking a little bit about why why does a business need to have an information security program and you can kind of boil that down into three buckets um, three different pressures that might be causing a company to to begin to create this information security program with one being uh, just the prevalence and increase all the time uh, of cybercrime, data breaches. Um, anyone on the call, of course, knows this. If you're watching the news any given day, it's not just these little companies that don't have an information security program that are hacked and have breaches. The biggest companies in the world um, can have this happen. So, of course, the uh, you know that that uh, fact is driving a lot of businesses to realize that there's a certain amount of work that's going to need to be done to uh, prevent against that kind of a risk. Um, in addition to that, you've got the regulatory environment, which is changing all the time. It's expanding rapidly, and it depends sometimes on what market you're in. So if you're selling into healthcare, you perhaps need to be HIPAA compliant. If you're a SaaS company, you might have a customer asking you to become SOC 2 certified or compliant. Um, if you're selling into Europe, do you meet the GDPR data privacy requirements? And this regulatory environment has been expanding rapidly in recent history. It likely is going to continue to, and those pressures um, get exerted on companies to, to begin to create a program as well. Uh, and then finally, companies um, are requiring that their vendors meet their security requirements. This is happening more and more. You have uh, even like, it used to be such that, hey, if I'm selling to an enterprise business, they, they might come back with a questionnaire. Maybe not so many mid-level companies would. More and more companies are coming all the time now. And we're seeing it on, on our end with our customers with the, the questionnaires that are just coming in. Um, and of course, there's some, there are some consequences for not aligning your business with any of these various pressures. Uh, if we're to talk about um, cybercrime, um, some of those are obvious uh, repercussions. You know, if you have a big breach and it gets out there, it becomes a PR nightmare, a lot of credibility being lost. Um, in some cases, if you're uh, a subject of a ransomware attack, it could be very expensive. You could have your systems locked up. I'm sure everyone's well aware of this or have read about it or maybe even knows a business that um, has been affected by this. Uh, and then, of course, the remediation efforts um, to undo all of that can be quite expensive. So it's really a healthy mindset to start thinking about how do we prevent that from ever happening in the first place and what resources can we put behind that to ensure we don't find ourselves having to um, deal with those consequences. Uh, on the regulatory side, and there's just some of the, a few of the um, uh, standards and frameworks and controls and legislations that are out there that businesses need to adhere to for different reasons, and uh, not adhering to some of these frameworks can result in consequences as well. Some have very hefty fines, GDPR being an example. There's some uh, hefty fines that are possible within that framework. Um, uh, some of these frameworks can become a barrier to entry if you're not meeting it. So if you're a company that's trying to sell a product into the health tech industry, or if you have a health tech product selling into healthcare, but you can't demonstrate that you comply with the HIPAA um, requirements for those types of businesses, um, then you, you by default might not get that uh, business and uh, need to shore up against uh, HIPAA. And then of course, some of these are a requirement to do certain types of business, PCI compliance, credit card processing standards. And if your business is not in compliance with PCI, you're not authorized to be collecting credit card information and, and performing transactions. So you could be, uh, have a barrier to even performing uh, financial transactions if you're not in uh, compliance with uh, that particular framework. Uh, so the last one that I have here in terms of consequences is, um, again, the primary driver. Uh, most of the companies that we talk to, do we wish that every company in the world just out of the box really took security seriously? Yes, it, everyone would be in a much better position. The, 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 the kind of cold hard fact of it is that this often gets kicked down the road because you have businesses that are new or they're startups, they got a million things going on, everyone's doing their job well, you got proof of concept, you're starting to sell, things get really exciting. And a lot of people have the mindset, well, this is, this is more of a hurdle or it's something I can just kick down the road. And the ones who do that, it's, it's always just a matter of when, you end up having to do this at some point. 
and that pressure that comes along with you know a really big prospect that you really want to do business with and perhaps a six figure deal is dropping the security questionnaire on you and you're left scrambling as to how you can get everything together in a very short period of time so the best advice is get started as soon as you can so you don't find yourself in that position if you do find yourself in that position and you can't meet their needs quick enough some of the consequences you are likely to incur are losing that deal and the revenue that goes along with it, um, losing credibility uh, with that particular customer. Um, they may not come back to you next year and see, well, did you end up getting all that stuff together? Uh, you know, you might lose that credibility entirely. And falling behind on competitors because most of the time, if you're talking to an enterprise prospect, they're talking to two or three other businesses as well. And if one of them is coming right out of the gate with a really strong security program and you're taking weeks to get back to them on things that they might see as basic, then it's really not positioning you well against your competitor in their eyes. Um, and then, of course, one that we've experienced ourselves is that feeling of crushing defeat when you don't get that deal that you wanted to because uh, you, know, you weren't able to, to provide them with the content that they needed to ensure they were comfortable to do business with you. Uh, so that's a little bit I want to share, and then I'll hand it over to Laird here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I, I think just some context on the crushing uh, defeat. I mean, speak back to our um, to our previous SaaS and the the, the situations we encountered. Um, you know, ultimately a, a, a tough realization back then. Um, you know, was ultimately you know, of course, the appreciation for the subject matter and everything that brings to um, you know, running your, your your business in a solid and effective way, and ensuring that um, you know you're protecting information. But you know, also that realization at the time for us that if we would have started earlier, um, that um, you know we, we we certainly could have had command and could have had security, um, you know, information security best practices built into um, the operation, and likely had a lot more um, you know more straightforward and less stressful outcomes because of it so um you know I, I really think it's interesting to think about it from that uh crushing defeat perspective but uh ultimately we've now turned that into what what we are so it's good um to to talk to um kind of some fundamentals around information security and you know what good programs you know or what what makes a good information uh, program i thought it'd be it'd be good to touch on um what you know we talked to is the cia uh triad if we just um you know thinking of in terms of confidentiality availability and integrity so you know at, at the core of a program or, or or thinking about you know structure their framework uh what should be there um you know when we think in terms of confidentiality it's really you know the information um that could be about employees it could be about clients it could be about information or, or sorry, but financial records um, of, of your customers. It's all this data um, that ultimately, you know, it's it's our responsibility, um, you know, and, and it's a business responsibility to uh, to keep um, um, confidential, and that it's you know it's a set, also accessed by the appropriate people in the organization. Uh, when we think in terms of integrity, um, it, or sorry, availability, uh, or sorry, in terms of integrity. Um, you know, we're thinking about that the data, um, you know, ultimately has to be uh, clean that, you know, if, if information is corrupted uh, in any way, it can have certainly negative uh, outcomes uh, in terms of the logical operation of the business or reasonable operation of the business and availability, of course, that, uh, you know, the information a business needs to run and ultimately needs to uh, work with uh, partners and, you know, to provide service to customers has to be available um, in the systems that certainly underpin that has to be available as well. Um, some core components of an effective information security program, uh, policies, uh, you know, absolute cornerstone, you know, ultimately the policies uh, have to uh, be there. Um, and, um, you know, some, some points on policy, some quick ones, um, you know, in our, in our experience, you know, the policies being concise and easy to understand for the people that actually have to follow them are critical. Um, you know, you, you can certainly have great policies and, and, you know, detailed policies, but again, if no one, 
um, you know, if the information in them isn't accessible, if it's, uh, you know, kind of overly technical or overly complex, um, you know, the, the use and value of those policies can, can certainly go down. In terms of asset classification, it's really understanding um, what your, your, you know, your, what your core assets are, you know, what key assets are in a clear inventory and understanding of, of what they are so that ultimately um, those can be protected accordingly. And, you know, you're, you're aware and, and you know, the, the worst case being that you're unaware of, of an asset that could potentially open up a, a, a vulnerability. Um, access control um, in that, that mix of things as well. And, you know, thinking about um, who in the organization has access to uh, information and also thinking through some of the vetting process that goes in in terms of the, the, the folks that may have access to critical information or confidential information. You know, are there background checks uh, in place that ensure that those folks are, um, you know, are, are trustable to have the access levels that they do? And in, even in a lot of cases, thinking about, well, um, you know, folks in the organization, you know, what do they actually need to have access to to perform the role in the organization? And, and you know, you can kind of think of it as, you know, if it, if it creeps up where they actually have more access to information that has nothing to do with the role that they perform, they shouldn't have that uh, access. Compliance on a, on a couple of fronts, uh, you know, one, of course, in terms of regulatory compliance or compliance with a standard that's uh, specific to your industry type. And, you know, we think about how that really trickles down through the organization and ultimately that your information security program really becomes about, you know, compliance with policies, procedures, and best practices that are, um, you know, very, that are relevant to your business or um, your um, industry sector. And, you know, in, in our uh, approach to that and thinking about core components, you know, a good point to note is that great policies are great policies, but if the tools aren't in place to ensure that they're actually understood and they're being adhered to um, and are being followed to and that and uh, followed, and that the uh, folks in the organization don't have an awareness of what their obligation is to do so, then ultimately, you know, the, the, those policies don't have value and your, your, your program certainly suffers. So compliance on those levels, um, you know, we also think in terms of information security, of course, like, um, you know, business continuity, that disaster recovery, what are reasonable scenarios that we can think through that we can have a plan in place for that if something does happen, that we're ready to act and there's a process to do that and that we can, you know, we can ultimately put forward our strongest front to deal whatever that ch with, with whatever challenge that is. And then we also think about validation and testing. Right? So it's ultimately what are we doing to ensure that the program um, remains, um, you know, strong, remains solid, that our, our policies are relevant as we move forward, that we're, we're, we're kind of in continuous validation to ensure that. And how are we testing, uh, you know, the organization and, and our infrastructure uh, as well? And some of the things that come into play on the testing side can be things like, you know, consistent vulnerability management or a regular for for tech companies and SaaS companies, one is a you know regular cadence in place where you actually have a, a pen tester trying to breach the or you know breach the application, breach the organization, to um, you know to to find any vulnerabilities there, and you know kind of testing back and, and forth against that to ensure that we're actually uh, you know maintaining the appropriate uh, practices in the organization. So some core components there to, uh, to think about. That's great. Thanks, Laird. Um, so, you know, our goal here today, it's a short period of time to cover a whole lot, but it's really to kind of stimulate people and to get you thinking about uh, some first steps that you can take if you find yourself in this position and uh, what free tools are out there. You know, there are a number of things that can be done for free to, to begin to put a program together. And the sooner you start is really the most important part of, of that advice. But um, we have on our site, on Securacy's website, on our blog, there's a lot of content with guides and how-tos on many of these uh, related topics. Um, you could begin to set up policies and tracking tasks if you're using G Suite or something or, or Google Docs where you want to actually just start putting some stuff together, build a little bit of a, an internal clearinghouse of materials uh, within your organization. Um, we have a free tool as well, and uh, that's going to give you 
um, a number of free policies that you can actually implement within our tool. Um, there's uh, uh, information security training available for free in that solution as well. You can sign up for it on our website right now. There's no cost and it also includes a business continuity builder. Um, and we have a marketplace within the application as well that will take you to some trusted partners. If you are exploring other um, tools that you might need, virus scanners, for example, uh, VPNs or whatever those solutions might be, you can access a marketplace within our application to browse around and see what's out there. Um, to give you an idea, if you were to want to take advantage of that free solution, when you uh, sign up for that through our website, the first thing it's going to do is ask you to answer some questions about your organization. And the reason why is because the policies that the tool is going to create for you are custom to your business. So in our free version, you get up to, I think, five free policies and they're relevant, like remote work policies or for example, in there, um, which are very relevant right now with everyone working at, uh, from home. But basically um, come through, answer the questionnaire, tell it you know, what uh, areas you do business in. It's gonna ask you some things that are relevant to the policies. And then when you come through and finish that questionnaire, it will uh, build that policy set for you in your account and they'll be actionable. So you can actually start to assign these policies to the right people in your team and then begin to collect sign off on those policies. Um, here's just a list that you can see of uh, policies that now this is our, this is our paid version that's got everything, but you'll get uh, five of these policies in the free version. And uh, just as an example, if we have people um, bringing their own device, that's a policy that's in the free version. And if you activate it, it gives you all the policy text automatically generate it. So we essentially write it for you. You can then assign your team members to it who should sign off on that. And then they can come back uh, into the application and see on the dashboard, the policies that you want them to sign off on. Um, they can basically just pop that out, uh, read the policy, and then come down and sign off on it at the end. Uh, so that's, you know, a two second introduction to the free version of Securacy. And then also with that comes uh, tools for building out a list of your assets and their um, risk levels. The um, awareness training courses come, come along with that free version. So if you want to train your staff for free on topics like what to do if you're using public Wi-Fi or an unsecured network, you can be assigning your team members to um, come in and take this course watch a video, answer um, a quiz or a questionnaire on that and, and, and complete some training. So that's another, just another place where you can start, get some free um, tools uh, in place. And uh, I think at that, we only got a couple of minutes left. I think Larry and I got a little more chatty than we anticipated, but uh, let's then uh, kick it over for any questions. That's great. I think you may have answered uh, a lot of questions that people were wondering up front coming into this, uh, this session. So I've got a couple of questions. If you have a question um, that you want to get answered, drop that into the chat right now or the, the question section and we'll read that out so that way we can get Mark and Laird to answer the questions that you need answered. Um, so I want to start off with a, I have a question here. So what frameworks and regulations does the security platform actually help you with? Does it work for GDPR? Uh, short answer, yes, it works for GDPR. Uh, the longer answer, which won't be too long, is that all of these frameworks, whether you're talking about GDPR, SOC, ISO, NIST, HIPAA, whatever, um, are at their core based on a common body of knowledge or, or you know, a, a broader set of best practices. Um, and so, yes, the HIPAA, or sorry, the GDPR controls are in our application. And if you have a customer in Europe and they're saying, uh, or you have European data stored in your system and you need to be able to um, understand internally, how uh, have you closed all your gaps to ensure that you're compliant with GDPR, um, that's doable. Um, but you might have a customer that in a few weeks says, well, GDPR isn't where our, our question is, how do you stack up against a SOC 2? Um, those controls are in there. You can run reports on that kind of stuff. But it all comes back to, you know, the, our system being designed based on an overall global uh, common body of knowledge. 
that's a great answer for for that. It's definitely there's a lot of overlapping things between the different frameworks and regulations, and it's being able to figure out where the gaps are between what you your company has and doesn't have. So here's a here's a product question. So if you upgrade from the free account, how much does that cost and what actually comes with that? And I think you actually alluded to this a little bit, Mark, about you get basically a lot more policies is one of the big things. So what else, what else comes with that? Yeah, um, and, and to be very upfront, our free version is very, very valuable. So I would say get it and use it because it's going to bring you value right away. If you need um, a policy set beyond what the free version offers, uh, you know, most companies are dealing with between 25 to 30 policies on average to become compliant. Um, and so you, when you go from the free version to the paid version, you get all those additional policies, access to our customer um, support. And uh, we also have some other areas of our business, which is uh, advisory services. So instead of engaging like a big four consulting firm and paying their rates, we have our own advisory services that can help you navigate certain processes uh, and then uh, on the other side, as Laird mentioned earlier, if you are requiring uh, vulnerability management, penetration testing, these are things that you have to do or, or want to do because you should be doing them. We also offer uh, that stuff as well. Great. And here's uh, one last question before we go. I think this might be our, our last one that we have time for. Um, so. How do you manage different employee groups that you might have in your company? Do you send all of the same policies to your developers as you do to your other teams like marketing or sales? Uh, there are some policies that might be company-wide, uh, remote work, for example, especially now. Um, so that might be a policy that gets um, assigned to an all employees group, but you do have the ability to break out separate groups. So. Um, I, I started working here at Securacy in February and I joined the sales team. And so when I joined, um, we use our own stuff. I got an invitation to come into our company Securacy account and I had 11 policies that applied to me as a sales guy. For example, I do not have to understand and read off on the encryption policy that like our developers are using or you know things like that go over my head on the DevOps side. Um, so you can break out the different groups and assign the right policies to the right groups. And that helps a little bit with onboarding new employees as well. So you hire someone um, three weeks down the road and you drop them into the bucket they belong to and they'll automatically adopt the policy sign-offs and, and task completion related to that particular group. Beautiful. All right, I think that wraps it up for us today. Mark Laird, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your knowledge around information security. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.